welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'll be explaining about Autolony Double Diffusion. So let's get started. So we'll have an objective to this video, which is to learn the technique of Autolony Double Diffusion. So moving on with. So let's talk about the principle first before moving on to the procedures of the Autolony Double Diffusion. So this particular immunodiffusion uh, in gels are classified as single diffusion and double diffusion. So this particular one is a double diffusion in which both the antigen and antibody are allowed to diffuse into the gel. So in this case, what happens is both the antigens and the antibody will in interact with each other in a particular space and time. So this particular assay is frequently used for comparing different antigen preparations. And in this test, different antigenic preparations, each containing single antigenic species are allowed to diffuse from separate wells against the anti serum. So what happens, I'll just give you a small overview. So let's just say this is a plate which contains the gel. So this is, let's say this is the agarose gel and in which uh, as the agarose gel solidifies, uh, we'll dug in three wells like this, you can say. So as we dug in three wells, we'll pour in the antigens in these two parallel wells. So in these two wells will uh, add on the antigens. And let's say in the third well or the upper well, we'll add the anti -serum. So as we add on the anti serum, so these anti these two antigens or these two antigenic wells will react with the anti serum and this will lead to formation of certain patterns. So these patterns would look like this, might look like this. So it would lead to formation of certain patterns which will indicate the identic uh, identicalness of these antigens. So whether these two antigens are identical or not. So this is how it, uh, this is just an overview given for your reference, a brief overview. So depending on the similarity between the antigens, different geometrical patterns are produced as said. So this is how it would look like. So, moving so this is somewhat it would look like as I was explaining, giving you an overview. So let's say these are, let's say these are three different slides. This is one, this is two, and this is three. And in this we have, uh, these are agros, this is the agros gel, let's say this is a particular agros gel in which we dug in three wells. So this is first, this is second, this is third. And in these two wells, this is the first well, this is the second, this is the third well. Let's say in the first and the second well, the first two wells, we add on the antigens. These two contain the antigens and the third well contains the antiserum. So when the antigens react with antiserum, when the, both the antigens react with antiserum, these lead to formation of these sort of lines. So I am highlighting that line, these kind of lines. So which may differ from antigens to antigens depending on the concentration of antigens. So these are different types of lines that may be formed. So this is the first pattern of line. This is the second pattern of line that might be formed. And this is the third pattern of line. So this is a crisscross line, absolutely. This is a V-shaped line and this is a little bit y shaped line so this is a v shaped this is a y shaped kind of line and this is a crisscross line so i'll explain to you what these lines indicate so moving on. so the first shape which is a v shaped line so this in this case the antibody cannot distinguish between the two antigens and in this case both the antigens are identical to each other so these both, uh, these two antigens are immunologically identical. So as I said, this is the first pattern. So this indicates identicalness of the two antigens. So coming to the second point, so which was the Y-shaped. Uh, this was the Y-shaped pattern formed. So in this case, uh, the antibodies in the anti serum react with more than one type of antigens. And in this case, a spur is formed. So this is a kind of spur that is formed here which uh, thought to result from the determinants present in one antigens but lacking in the other. So in one of the antigens was able to be recognized but whereas the other was not able to be recognized. So the both are not identical in this case which was similar in this, the, the first case. So in this case what happens is both are not identical whereas the anti serum can recognize the first antigen. Let's say this is the first antigen, whereas it cannot recognize the second antigen. So therefore, thereby, uh, this difference in antigens, these two antigens results in a formation of a spur. 
All right. So come to the third pattern, which is a crisscross thing. So in this crisscross thing, both the two antigens are absolutely different to each other, and the anti serum cannot recognize any of the two. So this leads to formation of a crisscross line, absolute crisscross line. So in this case, only one of the antigen was uh, the anti serum could not recognize only one of the antigens. So which lead to formation of a spur in this case. And in here, the third case. The anti serum cannot recognize any of the two antigens here, which leads to formation of a certain crisscross line. So, moving with that, so coming to the kit description, what it contains. So, in this kit, three sets of antigen and anti serum are provided. Each set uh, consists of two antigens and an anti serum. So, each set will contain the two antigens and one anti serum. So, this is just one. This is a one set. Which contains two antigens and one anti serum. Like this, we have three more, or more one, or more one or two sets, depending on the intensity or depending on how you want to carry out the experiment. So students will perform the ODD assay that will result in three different precipitate lines as described in the principle. So as I said, uh, we'll perform this experiment by pouring the anti serum and the antigens, and we'll get to see the different patterns like these that we just went through. Moving on with this, so what's the duration of the experiment? So this will take about two days. So the duration is very less in time, but the days, uh, the, it will be two days, but the time required for each day is very less. So in day one, we'll have just one hour in which we'll just prepare the gel and loading of antigen and anti serum will be carried out. And in day two, uh, just the interpretation and observation will be carried out, which will hardly take around 20, 25 or 30 minutes. So the total time is one and a half hour, which will be completed in a total of two days. So it might seem a very long cause it's two days, but the, um, but the amount of work we need to do is just one and a half hour and that's very simple. So moving on with this. So the coming to the materials provided. So what is the basic uh, material amenities that we require to carry out this experiment is agarose gel. We need a buffer. We need anti serum. We need antigens. We need three sets of antigens in this case and three anti serum as well. We need a glass plate. We need a punger for a gel punger for drawing or punching wells. And we need, we need a template. Even with that. So some of the more amount of uh, material that will be required is an incubator for storing that particular uh, gel or particular plate after pouring in the anti serum and the antigens. So as we pour in the anti serum and the anti serum uh, gel, we'll keep that plate in an incubator, which will be at 37 degrees for a day, and then we'll carry out the observation and interpretation. So for that case, we need an incubator. And some of the glass phase that are required is conical flask, measuring cylinders. Some of the reagents are alcohol, distilled water. Other requirements are micropipettes, moist chamber, and some of these. So procedure, coming to the main part, which is the procedure. So it's very easy. It's just, it will start with the preparation of 25 ml of 1.2% of agarose in 1x buffered by boiling to dissolve the agarose. So we'll mix agarose with the buffer and try to make uh, some sort of a solution and then we'll pour in that uh, pour that particular solution in a plate so that it solidifies. So may, it's very easy to make a 25 ml of agarose. Then we'll pour in the buffer to manage the pH and all of that. And we'll prepare five plates at a time and use on the same day. So we'll, uh, so we'll make five plates. So we'll make into five. So this is the calculation of one plate like this will make five more plates and use it on the same day. So then we'll cool that solution that is made to 55 to 60 degrees and then we'll pour into the plates. So we'll then pour into the plates and allow it to cool so that the particular solution solidifies into a form of a gel. So allow, we'll allow the gel to set for 30 minutes and then we'll use uh, when, then we'll use the help of a gel plunger, gel plunger, which uh, will punch the holes and keeping the glass plate on the template. So we'll punch three holes in one glass plate. So in glass, one glass plate, we'll, we know that we need to draw three wells, two for antigens and one for anti -serum. 
So this is a simple experiment to carry out. So thereby we'll fill the wells to 10 microliters each of the antecedent and the corresponding antigens as shown below. So this is how we'll do it and we'll keep the glass plate in a moist chamber overnight at 37 degrees. And after incubation, observe for opaque precipitating lines between antigen and antisera. So we know and this is the observation observation that we need to carry out is the observe for the uh, observe for the presence of precipitating lines either like any of these three and accordingly we'll interpret the results and the reporting the pattern of precipitating line observed in each case so let's just keep this video till here if you like this video please subscribe and share it with your friends and thanks for watching